And today, well, uh, we will talk about the very first layers, <laughs> again, of our knowledge of, our, our, of the law, of the knowledge of the law specifically. Yeah? Because today we will see the legal conceptions, the legal conceptions. And it is obviously the, the first layers, rings of the of knowledge of the law. <laughs> so the learning objectives of this uh, lecture are for as always, four or three more, more or less used to be. No? First, we will see the efficient causes of law. Again, <laughs> right, once more, once more. Obviously, uh, today we will focus specifically in, in the efficient cause. We have seen the formal cause, the final cause, the material cause, and now, now the last one and the biggest one, because you will see that we will spend three weeks in this course. Then, the, in the efficient course, we we'll find so many things. For example, legal facts, legal facts, how it works, why legal facts are source of law. And this is the question here. No? Why they all the efficient costs are source of law. Then we will see in, 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 in the, the biggest, the main part of the, the lecture, this, the legal conceptions, the legal conceptions, the first rings, the first layers of our knowledge of the law. And finally, today, the erroneous conception. How can an error, uh, a false conception, a misconception could be source of law. And if it, it is possible, you know, we will analyze both things. So let's begin the first topic, the efficient causes of law. This one. And for sure, you will remember <laughs> once again this, this, slide no? with the four causes causes of law the material cause of the table the wood yeah the formal cause we have seen that there could be so many formal causes the, the shape the color the structure and so on then the final cause the final cause for what is the table the purpose the aim the end dying decoration, or could be so many, no? Uh, also could be happiness, no? The purpose of the table is also happiness as an ultimate end. The ultimate aim of the life of the person, no? All things that works in that line. But today we, we will see specifically the efficient cause, no? And we have seen from the very beginning that all the tools are, are causes, efficient causes, the instruments to, to build the statue of liberty or the table. No? Um, but not also, but not only the, the instrument, but also the people that work on the statue of liberty or, or in the table doing or making all things, no? So, uh, also the engineers, the architect, the artist, um, so many people. Uh, so, as you can see, well, there is a lot of agent causes or efficient causes, but this is the same, no? But the most immediate Cause is an action, the an action of putting the bricks, of well, doing things, writing the uh, letters, uh, the signs, uh, etc. So it means, well, as you know, that well, an action, the immediate efficient cause is an action is an action. 
um, that that idea I said that could be one of the most important to understand the efficient cost. And, well, we can remember now eh? uh, the material cost. There are so many, but we just studied one. The call it materi material export. The the things. Uh, tons of steel, copper, iron, to do that. No? Formal cost could be also so many, the exemplar, the original, the formal, and a, a accidental form, and a substantial form, efficient cost, no? we have said that could be a remote agent, the author of all these kind of things. A, and also the immediate cost, France and the government of New York, and the workers and workers' action, the, the immediate, the immediate efficient cost, the action, no? once more. And the final cost will be a gift, a commemoration of one day, but the ultimate end probably to promote liberty. No? Yeah, so after seeing that, I will put you a question. And it is the question now. What are the efficient costs of the legal relationship? Or the efficient costs of the legal system? This is the question. So, good, yes, Georgina. Um, I think it's the, the acts done by the two parties, which is this buying and selling. I buying and selling, good, yeah, but, yeah. but this is, yeah, good, but this is the, you're right, and because it, the most immediate uh, efficient cost is an action. And, you're right, and, but that is just a, a cause of a, a, a specific contract of a legal a, a relationship, but about one agreement, not of, of the whole legal system. Arthur. Um, could it be the rules governing um, that trade, that action? The, the rules governing that action. For example? Um, that you should sell something that is of good quality, for instance. Yeah, but more or less you, 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 you discover one part, one action, but this is not the, you know, of, the, of the whole legal system. Yeah, I don't know if you realize that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, try, try to develop your, your answer, no? Try to think, no? Abdi Rahman. Yeah, morning, sir. Uh, what about the intention of the parties? The intention of the parties. Okay. Yeah. And what about the, the laws, uh, the statute law? There is no party there. <laughs> yeah. So it should be more than the parties. But in the legal relationship, obviously, there is uh, the intention of the parties, but not only. Because mm. the, any legal relationship is also governed by the law, statute law of the country. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you. So there should be another, no? Uh, Calvin, yes. Can we say um, it's, the, um, it's the general will of the people uh, seeking to establish a legal regime? Legal, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> general will of the people yeah yeah not what? parties but all the people good good and how you can call that the, that how i can call that uh huh i don't know can we call it we can't call it a consensus that's too that's too general yeah but no yeah, i don't not know a, all things are by consensus but all th uh, many things by by the will yeah, this is a, a broader concept, the will. Yes, you're right, you're right. I call that legal performance and also legal activity. 
an illegal activity could be the activity of the legislator or the activity of the parties of each legal agreement that could be both no okay but good 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 you are in any case it's in an incomplete answer again <laughs> you mark the hit and uh, hit the mark sorry. and but it, it's also an incomplete try to complete try to complete yes Tasneem. This is just a guess, um, but I'm, you mentioned the statutory undertakings of the relationship. So I was thinking that might be an efficient cause. So the statute by which the parties are enabled to make those actions. Yeah, okay. But once again, no? uh, I think uh, that we have said something more because it's not just the will of the parties. And it's also the will of the parliament or of the authorities. Yeah, it's the will of, of yeah. so many people, so many people, not just the parties. Uh, but once again, this is true. You hit the mark, but but it's not complete. So, uh, Georgina, do you want to say something? Um, I wanted to try again. Could okay, it be the act? The, okay, I'm just trying. The act of obeying the law. Yeah, once again, it's the will. Yeah, probably could be yes, 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 once, once again, it's the will. <laughs> one clue. If you want one clue to, to think about, uh, think on, on the inverted pyramid. <laughs> Abdirahman. Yes. Do you want to say something? No, no, sir. I don't say anything. Ah, okay. I, I was seeing your your hand raised. Okay, it's good. The the will, but try to think. It's, there is something more than the will. I can give you the answer, but I, I prefer, especially today, a, a time to think. Things requires time. What could be, what, think about, what, there could, should be another action, another action that can produce law. And obviously the, the actions of the will, there could be so many. We will see in detail all of them, all of them, <laughs> but uh, in, in three weeks. <laughs> so in these two weeks, we will see the acts of another thing. Each potency has his act, acts. Yes, that's name. Let's go again. I'm, I'm not sure, but could it be legislative action? So you did mention the action of authority, so in creating the statutory authority, then legislative yeah. action, the yeah. actions once, of the once again, is the, the legislator uh, is put his will and is the will, is the will, it's, it's the same. Lisa. Well, um, could it be the customs of the people? Yeah, little by little we are approaching, why? Um, most of the time, people's customs does do influence um, what is coded as legis as legislation. Well, this there are some behavior. Yes, for a custom to be a compulsory, what kind of things do you need? <laughs> well. Lisa, I don't know if you remember the, the requirements of, of, of the custom. In any case, Sally, do you want to say something? I want to say what the rule, okay, the things that make customs, the question you just asked Lisa, if I remember correctly, one of them, I don't know if this is the right term, but it's immemorial antiquity, like it should have been something that has been there. Time, good. Thank you. What else? 
it's not the there are three time is, is just the one of the requirements time obviously to repeat the same things and there is the last one that is most important rosalind yes um general acceptance general acceptance uh, well it's not exactly that uh, you, you 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 can improve the answer in any case let's go again with the the main question no? what other action could produce law the acts of the will the will could be the the wills of the people of one individual or of the legislator or any kind of authority but there is another potency peace yes I, okay i'm trying but i think like knowledge so when the oh, legislators <laughs> finally now develop your answer yeah why the knowledge and um, in which case okay. for example and so how the knowledge the... can produce law without the will um okay so i'm going to write on what on what lisa said um on customs now so if the legislators know about like have knowledge about these customs that guide the people um they will get maybe promulgated and those customs form law so they've been informed by yeah. their knowledge and thus they become law the third yeah. element of of custom is the conviction it's a conviction that the things that we repeat are compulsory without this conviction could be another kind of, of rule morality or etiquette or, or what, whatever you want no but not law the legal custom needs time repeat the same uh, action uh, and finally with the conviction with the conviction yeah it's a thing of the knowledge in any case in any case this is just a uh, uh, the, the the an example because there could be so many things in in the in the actions of the knowledge yeah for example uh, the culture the culture of the whole society for example how we can get memory but in so many ways you uh, you probably know so many ways so many ways but when you think i how i i will get married no well with a specific way you are, are catholic in front of the priest if you are not a uh, probably and you yeah, an athlete you will be in front of the legal authorities if you are muslim it should be completely different no so uh, the culture of each person that is knowledge that is knowledge is also is also source of law all the acts of the will and of the intellect well, uh, well not at all but many of them could be source of law and finally which uh, this is the hard question here no uh, which other action could be source of law <laughs> we have the remember the actions uh, could be if you have one potency because the potency is is acting is acting what other kind of potencies could be <laughs> Yeah, this is the hard question. I, I don't know if you will be able to. Have you gone? Well, yes, Arthur, try. Um, uh, so you've said one of the potencies um, is drawn from acting. Um, then what about thinking? Um, yes. So that would mean uh, operations of the mind. Or yeah well this is the the, the culture and, and is this is the customs and so many things the evidence uh, we will see a lot of things of the action of the of the mind that produce law 
and you will realize yes, this this produce law absolutely. Okay, Tasneem, yes. Um, can it be reality? In, Good. In this, okay. Good. But but explain explain a little more, yeah. Okay, so I'm I'm thinking reality because even in the Codex Juris Naturalis, we talk about legal facts, and legal facts are determined through physical reality. And additionally, we mentioned that customs as are as per knowledge, and then yeah. the actual action is through the will. But all of these elements need to occur within the total encompassing of reality. Yeah, but okay, but, but think about one action of the reality that is source of law, that change the law, that give you right or, or, or cancel uh, any kind of, uh, of your right. That's name, yes. Uh, oh, I'm not sure. Okay, well, that's, that's the, the, the question. Think okay. about one action of the nature that can produce mm -hmm. law. Rosaline. Um, could it be existence? So how? By existing, you either have the rights or you don't. But which is the action? Existence is being, and the action is mode of being. Try to develop because you are very near, very close to the answer. Okay, think about well, joy, finally. You have the word. <laughs> no, it, um, I'm just trying. Could it be habits? But how? How do one action can produce law? I'm thinking like the, from what you said about customs, and customs are the way of life of a particular people so they use them from like the habits that people yeah. have so that could produce law in a given way yeah obviously habits have to be into a some but it's not the immediate uh, agent cause yeah obviously it's an efficient cause of the law but uh, principally there could be two kind of habits but, uh, of the intelligence or of or the of the will and once again, we are talking about the intelligence of the will. And customs have two sources, the intelligence and the will. Because it's a, it's a conviction and you, you will repeat the action from, if you have time, so you have the, the custom. Well, uh, the existence. Well, obviously, it's not the existence because the existence is not an action, it, the existence is a material cause with, because you need the existence for the legal relationship, but it's not an action. Uh, but instead of that, you can say birth or death are, are actions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they are, uh, when one person born, there is a lot of new legal relationships in the family, a lot, a lot, no? Uh, one become father, another mother, another siblings, and with so many duties and so many rights. Also, when, when one person born at this, uh, well, from the very beginning, uh, this uh, guy will have all the human rights and so many things. No, so the action of born creates creates law. And that's why it's source of law, absolutely. And when one person passes away, obviously, obviously, no, there is a, a fact, a fact that changed a lot the the rights and the duties of the family, because the 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 children will receive a lot of goods of his father, for example, no. And um, will increase the properties, no? his properties, their properties. Uh, so, in this way, some legal facts could be source of law. Absolutely, could increase you the 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 
So let's see now this not increase your your properties um, or, or, or your duties also. As name, yes. Do you want to ask um, me something? Yes, I just wanted to ask what is the third requirement of customs? But because you'd mentioned time immemorial, you'd said conviction. What is the third one? And time, repetition of the same act, the second one. And third one, okay. you repeat that act, that action, because you are convinced that this is compulsory. This is the difference between the morality, customs of morality and legal customs. Okay? Okay. okay. Yeah. Thank Good. you. You're welcome. So, uh, now we can see here no decision cause this this kind of things you have in the code in the synthesis is not so long this this kind of readings but it probably is a synthesis no it's very deep each line no? so we have the first uh, efficient cause the legal fact it's not the reality it's not the being it's not the existence, because the existence is a material cause. You need the existence, obviously, of the goods, of the parts, parties, uh, but it is the material cause. And now we are talking about the efficient cause, that it is an immediate action. No? So is the, the actions of the nature or the actions of the, the knowledge, we will call that legal conceptions what are legal conceptions well uh, that source of law that is created when the intellect judge what is the law is an activity of the intellect that is judging what is law in this case no it's just the intellect and when the intellect discovers something the intellect produce produce the law this can be a natural cultural, we will see, general particular, true or false. Yes, Arthur. Um, sorry, sorry for the interruption. Don't worry. But did you say that legal facts are the actions of nature? Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. actions of nature, uh, as well as, as, as legal conceptions are, are acts of the intellect as well as legal activity or legal performance is an act or act of the will. It operates when the will determines the right and the law. Yeah, and could determine in so many ways. We will see, a probably could be the will of the legislator or the will of the parties or the will of the individual also just the will of one person, of one individual, could produce law. Yeah, you will see. You will see, for example, a, a, a testimony of a guy was the will of one person that wants to say something, no? and can change all the, all the, uh, the, the course of the events, of the a trial of a legal process, or. And finally, we can say that there, we can find in so many sources of law uh, a mix, a mix of, of, of many things. For example, specifically uh, in customs. In customs, you have an act of the will that repeats the action, an act of the uh, intellect that is convinced about the compulsory nature of this action that should be repeated. Yeah, that's why we can say that legal customs are a mix, a mixed source. <laughs> and, but not only legal customs, but also all kinds of praxis. We will see what is praxis, no? And why is source of law. And also jurisprudence, jurisprudence too. Why jurisprudence? Because jurisprudence is principally, principally, an act of the intellect of the judge. That he, the judge tried with his intellect 
to understand what is law. But from time to time, well, he decided, he, decide, he realized that in the legal system, there is no written law, nor custom uh, that talks about this, this, this case. And from time to time, the, the judge should decide the case, should decide, the, uh, realize, the, the judge can realize that there is so many fair, just, legal possibilities, and the judge will choose one to, 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 to put the, the end point to the case, no? to finish the case, no? to give the, uh, the decision. Okay, the judgment. I don't know if you have any question about that. I think that is more or less simple. Uh, yes, Rosaline. Um, what did you say is the most immediate agent of the law? The most immediate cause of the law? Yeah, the most well, immediate efficient cause. All of them, all of them. Oh, okay. This is an action, but actions of so many things, yeah so many things okay we will see in detail each one but all of them okay now we will see the first one legal facts legal facts um, well um, legal facts is as we say as a fact a fact a fact of who or whom, no? Uh, well, it could be a fact of a human, uh, but obviously without the will, without the knowledge, because if not, it's not legal fact, but it's legal uh, conception or legal activity. It's a, for, but the example that we gave is this, no? The birth of a man, the birth of a man, um, there could be so many examples, but this is the most most clear, no? Because when one person born, uh, you can find so many new legal relationships between the family, within the family, and uh, and also in the society. The society should respect, protect all the rights, the human rights of this new individual of the society. So oh, this could be an example, but also will be many other examples. Not the death, also the death, uh, also some actions that we do without any kind of knowledge or or will, no? uh, by mistake or by anything. No? But also could be the facts of the nature. This could be no two kind of facts. Uh, so, one, I can put so many examples, uh, but for example, the, the most typical one is when a river increase the stream, when a river have more water, all the people that have some land that is bordering uh, the the river that have some borders with the river will decrease the property because there is more water there is less land no and on the contrary if the the there is a dry weather very dry weather for a long time and there is no water all the people that have their land uh, very close to the, to the river will, will gain some meters of land. And that's why it's very clear. It's a source of law. It's a source. Uh, the, the, when the, the, the river is drier, I gain some rights, some meters of land. And when it is not, I lose, I lose rights. So that's why it's so clear. But it's very interesting and very, uh, you have a lot of, of reasons to understand very well, to try to understand very well how legal uh, facts work, because it's, it changes 
all kind of laws, constitutional law also, and a fact can change the, the constitution of one country, for example. No? That's why it's a source of law. No? And I will explain with coronavirus what is happening now uh, ar uh, around the world. Yeah, and you will see how coronavirus changed constitutions, changed statute law, changed agreements, changed so many things. You know? and, and I will say now, uh, I will put uh, some examples you know, of uh, this one. In so many countries around the world, there is in the constitution, uh, this land, there couldn't be any kind of suspensions of public services. Yeah, for example, in the Constitution of Ecuador and in some other, no? there couldn't be any kind of suspension of public service. But with coronavirus, <laughs> with coronavirus, uh, uh, there were a lot of strong measures, strong lockdowns, in so many countries because are not going so well things in, in, in that places. And also the, the public service, not all of them, but uh, uh, are suspended, especially uh, the service of the judge uh, or, or the judicial services for so many time. And also another kind of little service, a post and other kind. No? And also the, the, the principal one, the main one, uh, water, electricity, and so on, energy. Uh, well, some kind of decrease of the, 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 the service. Because why? Because is it impossible if people cannot go to the office to work? There, there is not possible possibility to, to give the same service. So there were a suspension, a suspension, a legal fact, a, corona, a virus appears, and this phrase of the constitution falls. <laughs> Incredible, no? Uh, let's see another example, no? Uh, work law, work law. Uh, so you can say, uh, you can see in so many statute law of so many countries, that there is a lot of provisions, but the place of work and the working hours, the timetable, uh, in so many work agreements you can find. No? You have to be in the office at this time and you will left, you, you will be able to, to left and uh, to leave the, the office uh, at that time. Well, it doesn't work with coronavirus. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, why it doesn't work? Well, because we are locked down. No? We, um, in not all places are the same. I think that here in Kenya is better, much better than in other countries. Uh, so, but in so many places you have to close all things. You cannot work. Work here is work. Uh, in in your in the office with because there is no social distance and there is no possibility you have to work in your home so uh, you 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 the uh, virus change two things no the statute law of so many countries that say well you have to be in the in that place and in, with this time no and time also no if you don't have to be there at what time you will be able to work? Well, <laughs> probably before, after breakfast, in the evening. You can choose. You can choose. No, probably it's it is not so good for the workers because well, probably so many employees will ask more than they can do. In in some other case, would be better. I don't know. In any case, this is uh, another example of how legal facts can change the law, the statute law, the constitution, freelance workers. Yeah, nowadays, well, uh, especially with coronavirus, well, there's a lot of freelancers, people that work, uh, work just for one thing or for, for a project.
uh, it is a problem because uh, you can hire, for example, a guy from Singapore could hire uh, another person of, I don't know, of the United States and for a work that should be done for people of Kenya. No? So which law you will apply, and which, which uh, insurance you will give? Well, there is not, not so clear. No? Now with internet and with coronavirus, all the workload uh, is, is not so, so stable. No? So this is another example that what is happening now. And also, well, uh, this uh, principle of procedural law uh, that this all the testimonies should be in the face, uh, face to face with the judge. The princip principle of immediation. I don't know if you have heard about this principle. In any case, in any case, with coronavirus, it principle doesn't work <laughs> in so many countries because you cannot uh, go, people cannot go at the same time to the court. Uh, and now, nowadays, there's, there are so many uh, digital testimonies, uh, declarations, uh, not in, in the face to face with the judge, but by Zoom, by Teams, or by any kind of, of video communication, no? Yeah, more or less is the same, but it's not the same. Uh, when you have a, a person in front of face to face, you realize so many things. You realize uh, so many things. Uh, but now, well, uh, or in the the process of so many countries allow these kind of things, and uh, it is incredible, no? and the specific rules that are in the codes, in the statute law, in the act, are not uh, uh, revoked <laughs> because you need a lot of time to, to revoke all of that kind of rules in the parliaments of the countries. No? But it's just a fact, it's just a fact. We need to survive. So finally, so many deadlines. You can think about the construction contracts, for example, or so many other contracts. You, know, you put some deadline, and then with Corona, what do you will do? What do you will do? Or ask uh, more time you know, to, to fulfill your duties, you know, to apply uh, all the things that you said in the contract, the agreement that you will do. That's why it's, it is very, very quite important <laughs> uh, to know something about this clause. The clause of Rebus Sic Stantius. Have you heard something in any uh, subject about this clause, Rebus Sic Stantius? In international law, for example, subject or or in contract. No? Duta, yes, you can answer. Oh sorry, I had a question. Can I <laughs> ask it first and I try and answer? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but first, first, just answer me. Have you heard something about this clause or not? Yes or not? Um, yes, to some extent, in contract. From what, from what you um, have in the code, um, you provide that this clause, it means that when things um, in a law, in a contract have changed to an extent that it's absurd to comply with it, it's just to have force to oblige. Okay. So I think contract you could com compare it to something like frustration so if a constant i mean a contract has been frustrated it can't be it can't yeah. be performed anymore yeah, yeah so I, sorry. okay good 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 I, I i will give you time to 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 your question but now i just i want to finish this idea 
Yeah, okay. this is very famous in contracts, but it's also very famous in international law because in, in any treaty is a contract, a kind of contract. Uh, and if you sign a treaty, thinking that, for example, we, with this treaty, we will put the borders of the country, no? and the borders will be the peaks of the mountains. No? But <laughs> when we go to that mountain, there is no mountain. <laughs> what kind of peak could be? <laughs> so uh, all treaties in international law have this clause, expressly or not, uh, that all the, the clauses uh, are valid rebus sic stantibus. Rebus means things, sic, sicut, uh, as, stantibus, uh, uh, stay in the same way, as long as the things are in the same way, more or less, more or less, it means rebus sic stantibus. And it helps but now, with the new uh, vision of jurisprudence, we can say it clause doesn't apply only for contracts, but could apply for international law and for any kind of law or any kind of custom also, or any kind of positive law. So uh, we, we use the same the same doctrine of rebus sic stantibus to apply to any kind of norm custom international law the laws of the country the rules law the principles and so so so, so that's the idea the, the new vision of, uh, that this subject give will give you with you study does okay duta uh, now your question Okay, sorry to take you back, but um, when you were discussing the facts of human, um, yeah. you said an example could be birth, death, and that they happen without um, knowledge and will. So I want you to exp I understand how it would happen with death, but in the case of birth, how does it occur without knowledge and will? Because I think th before you give birth, there has to be, you have to know the action they're doing to conceive a child before you give birth. So I just wanted you to um, clarify that. Yeah, uh, we will clarify <laughs> a lot <laughs> in the following minutes, uh, uh, in the next two, three weeks. In any case, uh, it's a good point. And I think that you discover something that is, that uh, there is a division uh, but all divisions are not uh, very e exactly <laughs> because in, in, at the end of the day, all kind of 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 law needs needs the intellect. All kind of law, also legal facts. Yeah, because needs someone to understand that. Uh, yeah, in in this sense, all kind of, of source of law is a mix. Uh, it's a mixed source, but we are we can say uh, in any case we we see that in customs or there is a mix specific specifically of the will or and, and of the intellect in the uh, in an agreement it, obviously there should be the intellect but uh, principally the the main source of the, is the will and in culture the principal activity is act, an activity of the intellect okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, good, good, good inter intervention. So, let's see something about this kind of things. Well, uh, no, sorry. Now I want to share you the code. Uh, let's see. Oh, yes. Uh, this is the code. You have read something about. You have to update the code. Uh, I will give you the, the last version today. Yeah, with all translated. 
uh, at least the first part. The code has five parts. In this subject, we will see just the first part of the code. Uh, that, that is a summary uh, synthesis of the main reasons that all kind of people of all religions have about law. So, uh, we have seen this legal fact, the notion, so it's, uh, the changes that occurs in the physical reality. And we have seen that there could be two kinds of legal facts, personal fact and natural event. No? Uh, if these kind of things happen without the intellect and without the activity of the will. Finally, well, uh, you, 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 you can make a lot of uh, distinctions. For example, facts can be foreseeable, foreseen, or fortuitous, no? and it will change the responsibility, the liability of the people. No? If, uh, if someone can foresee that is coming uh, something, well, uh, it, that person has the responsibility to put some measures, probably, you know? This is the, the first consequence of this division. No? But it is absolutely fortuitous. Uh, you cannot resist that fact you are not responsible, you have not no kind of responsible uh, liability. For example, the coronavirus is obviously a fortuitous fact. No one, no one expected that one year ago. Yeah. Well, uh, this, this one. and this is the clause brevus sic testantius is very important. Probably one of the things that you will do in your life is to write so many agreements. Don't forget to put this clause in that agreement. It is quite important, no? It says, if the things regulated by any law, custom, or contract have changed to such an extent that it is absurd to comply with that regulation, it ceases to have force to oblique. The reus existantius clause is implicit in every decision and in every legal transaction. And if you forget to put the clause in each contract, in, in each agreement, don't worry at all, <laughs> because it is implicit in every contract. In any case, probably you will be able to go to the courts and to say, well, I forget to write something about this, but it is clear that at impossibilia nemo tenetur. Have you heard about that, that phrase? It's in Latin, no? At impossibilia nemo tenetur. No one of you? Don't you want to try to translate it? At impossibilia, it means uh, to the impossible, the, thing, the impossible things, at impossibilia, Nemo tenetur. Who is Nemo? Have you heard about Nemo? No one of you? <laughs> At least you have seen the, the, the film, Nemo, the fish. <laughs> Why Nemo is called Nemo, the fish, no? Because Nemo means nobody, nobody. Uh, it's so sad, the story of Nemo. I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> well, to the impossible things, Nemo, nobody, tenetur is obligate, it, it, it is asked to do that impossible thing, yeah? It's mean, and this is the reason of the clause rebus sic stantibus. Okay, let's go ahead now with uh, 
Now we will see uh, something about legal conceptions or the things that are in the code. Um, for sure you remember this painting. Don't you know what it is, um, which is the moment of this? This is a painting that is in Rome, in a very famous uh, chapel, 16 chapel. Yes, Rosaline. I want to say it's the painting of the creation of Adam by Michelangelo. Good, very good. And this is the precise moment that the body was created in, in that history. history. Uh, and is, this is the precise moment when God gives to, to Adam one thing. Which thing? The image of God, say, the, the Bible, no? Um, and what is the image of God? Well, it, it is a very hard question in theology. <laughs> there is a lot of uh, uh, text and authors and uh, answers and <laughs> that say something about one of them say, well, is the soul, will is the intelligence, will is the will. Uh, or is something well, or, or or could be all good things of the uh, of humankind, no? Because all good things should be first on God and then in in our uh, in our life and in, in ourselves. Okay. So this is the precise moment of when uh, God gives. Uh, the soul, or well, especially the intelligence, and we will talk about now the intelligence. No, this is the roof of this couple. I don't, I don't know. So many paintings, as you see, no, it's incredible. You can spend so much time in that couple just seeing the roof with so many paintings of Michelangelo and so many other people. I remember one morning. Uh, well, just seeing uh, with a guy that knows so much about this kind of things and so on. It's very famous, this chapel. But it's just to show you uh, where is the painting. Let's talk about legal conceptions. As we say, it's an activity of the intellect. Uh, it's the result of the judgment, practical reason. Remember, the practical reason is is the reason that put in practice something <laughs> that uh, commands to the human uh, individual, to the human being, what should be done. Uh, and is a result of a, a, a practical reason that prudently determines what is just, fair, legal. And this is the difference between morality, no? Morality is also part of the particular reason but that prudently determines what is good. In the legal field, the legal conception is determines what is, the, what is just in a specific case. And for do that, uh, the intelligence uh, correlates, organize, systemize uh, so many things. That's why in the code uh, we are taking into account the being of things, the legal notions and values, principles and norms. So there is a lot of things that are in our, our mind that uh, the legal conceptions created and with these kind of things can produce law. So here's we have some notion, the form of the reality. No? Then we understand that this is nature we assign, uh, put together the, the thing that we have, the form that we have in our mind with a name. No? And we realize that it, it is valuable 
because it's a good thing and so on. No? And then uh, we affirm that value no? and we uh, uh, have then the first principles as we see, we have seen in the last lecture with the natural law formula. Pro natura, for example, the principle pro natura, pro nature. No? And then if we continue reflecting with the reflection of these kind of things, we will discover so many norms and finally so many rights and probably so many legal relationships. No? Uh, okay, uh, it's just remembering the natural law formula, the, this, the way of thinking, the usual way that all of us used to think more or less, more or less. No? So now we will talk about the life of the legal conceptions. What means the life? You know, when the legal conceptions are created, the creation. But also means how they are communicated to other people, the life. You know? And finally, what is the final of the life, the death? <laughs> how legal conceptions cease to exist, are extinguished, uh, disappear. So the question is this, no? Uh, the three questions. There are three questions that you should answer. First question, how legal conceptions are created? Second question, how they are communicated, transmitted to all other people. And last question, how a legal conception cease to exist, extinguish, disappear? Let's go with the first question. How legal conceptions are created? Yes, peace. Um, through bug. I'm not sure. <laughs> but how? Through? Through bug. But you can explain a little more? Um, so when people are born, there yeah. is different legal relations that are created, like for instance, mother, father, siblings, and the society has to take care of the child, has to protect the child at all costs. Yeah, but so, remember that a bond uh, is a legal fact, not a legal conception. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay. Let me think about it. Good. Uh, some other wants to try? How legal conceptions could be created? Probably the, the question is more difficult than you can, uh, and, uh, uh, the question, but the answer is so easy. <laughs> I can change the question, for example. How the ideas of our mind are created? Yes, Majid. It's Majid. It's Majid. 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 So sorry, <laughs> I'm learning. Okay. This is in nature. Sorry, can you repeat uh, louder? It's true nature. True nature, but how? Um. Okay. I don't know how to explain. <laughs> Okay, uh, Joy, yes. I'd say um, when we acquire knowledge, which is from reality, we develop new ideas in our minds. So I'd say that's how maybe we form legal conceptions when yeah. we acquire knowledge. Yeah, yeah, knowing re reality, yes. Yeah, knowing reality, you're right. <laughs> That's the natural the formula, no? and how we can understand reality and get some legal concepts that will help us to understand the law. Yeah, good. Boyd, yes. 
Natasha. I was going to say it starts with um, the thought process. So because you think about things which typically end up in from thoughts to actions. So from those actions, then we set them into law because they become, you know, a big part of who we are. Yeah, but how they create a legal conception? Yeah, because you think about you think about it before before it's con like before it's made into a theory in your mind. Yeah. Then after it becomes in your mind, then you say, okay, let's put it into action. Then you enact it into actual written law. Yeah, but it is it, it seems to be an act of the will or not? When you decide, yes. let's put in action that. Yeah, it seems to be an an act of the will and not of the intellect. Yeah, more or less. Yes. yes. In yes. any case, you have some clue there. Yeah. Uh, okay, Collins, you raised your hand. No. <laughs> uh, okay. Try to think, try to think. It just is knowing the reality, but it's not just knowing the reality. There is so many things. And I think that Natasha has some idea, some idea and probably he can develop more. I think all the limits of the code, you can develop with your mind, all the limits. Melissa, yes, uh, don't you want to say something? No. <laughs> Okay. What can what 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 um, other way of creating or or knowledge uh, could be peace? Uh, maybe through the potencies. So when you hear, when you see, so you yeah. create that knowledge and then you store it in your mind not as the actual object, but as a concept of that object. So, yeah, good, good, yeah. good, good. And then again, even through, even through, uh, what is it called? The intern, the less, the internal potencies. So imagination, you can imagine how maybe, if yeah. you've never been to the moon, how yeah. the moon is, so, yeah. yeah it, this is the process of knowledge, yeah. And specifically, we will call that, your answer, we will call evidence, the evidence of the senses, the evidence of the internal senses or potencies and the external ones also. Yeah, we, we got some evidence from reality and it helps to um, us to understand better the law. Yeah, you're right. More of this, one of you uh, said something like, like this, no? But the reflection, no? It's not just it's not just uh, seeing the things, no? Our knowledge works in a different way. Uh, we are not angels. The angels don't don't have a uh, reasoning. I don't know if, if you uh, know more or less the theory of knowledge of angels. <laughs> they just see things, no? See, yeah, and, and go, they got uh, they well, in the past. But, um, but it could be in the present also, and uh, get all the information with just seeing, just seeing. We, our knowledge works in a different way. We first have some, some ideas, and then little by little, we are organizing that ideas, no? Ref the reflection. And by the reflection, little by little, we obtain one, two, three, four conclusions, and one of the that conclusions of those conclusions will be uh, related with uh, the legal field, with the law. And that conclusion will be what we call a legal conception. Yeah. So by evidence, by reflection, um, we will see we will see something else. No. How legal conceptions are created. Well, by the evidence of fairness, no? It's not just an evidence uh, of the senses, but the evidence related with the law, yeah? For example, for example, 
well, uh, well, I, I, I will put the example uh, uh, later. By reflection of what is just, the second one. And, and by experience of a fair or unfair action. By experience. So many people know about the law by experience. <laughs> For example, uh, there are many people uh, that don't understand very well the law or um, commit any kind of crime. And I know that people is it's not a theor theor theoretical example, no? Um, they received some judgment <laughs> and expend uh, many years in prison, in jail. Uh, and at one point they realized, well, I understand now that it was not good, it was not legal, it was not just to do that. So many people uh, change their life in, in the jail because there they have some time to reflection. But as you know, there is other people <laughs> that never change, <laughs> nor in jail, nor in their family, never, no. <laughs> um, so there could be a, a lack of reflection or I don't know. Who knows, who knows, nobody knows. But that's why I put this experience in third place because experience uh, alone with uh, just experience don't give us any kind of conclusion, legal conclusion. Experience with, you should put the experience with the reflection, with the evidence to understand things, no? Uh, and finally, by intuition about what the law could or should be. Many times we have just an intuition or intuition. Of, well, this seems to be that that person have some right, no? An intuition. How intuitions are created? Well, it's so many different ways, no? So, uh, so many times by just it's an, an unconscious intuition no when we see uh, that somebody is doing something and then and the next one the same and um, our parents used to do the same we can have an intuition that probably this thing this behavior is compulsory you have to do that you should do that and um, if you well, uh, and little by little, well, a society uh, appears one custom, one legal custom. But at the very beginning, it just was an intuition of many people. No? Uh, but probably it is one of the way of creating legal conceptions. No? That legal conceptions support uh, customs and so many things. So these are the four ways of creating, and we can. Add one, just one, creativity, creativity. Why creativity? Because the human mind can create so many things that that some years ago there is no law. For example, fictions, any company, any enterprise, uh, or is a, a creation, a creation of our mind, no? Coke. A Coke company, obviously, no? it's a name, it's a name created that human mind. Yeah, and this name we put a lot of goods, a lot of industry, a lot of titles, and so many things. No, it's a center of subjective situations, legal situations, as you know. Uh, and that's why, but it's a creation of our mind. It's a creation of our mind. Uh, so the, the, that creation, more or less is what, I, I don't remember, was peace or joy, 
that say that uh, internal potencies, imagination, yeah, imagination could create love, yeah, 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 good, very good, I enjoyed that, that answer, I don't remember <laughs> who was, were, uh, okay, second question, how we can communicate legal conceptions? to another people, how we can transmit to someone else a legal conception. No one of you want to try? Once again, <laughs> yes, peace. Uh, maybe by talking about it or when it's written, somewhere so they can read or hear and know the legal conception good talking yeah it's how we can communicate ideas talking <laughs> good <laughs> some other way yes it does mean um i had a similar idea through the use of language yeah so. we need language yeah okay georgina yes um, I think even by doing, like you can do something, you can do a particular thing. For example, when all cars stop at a red light, when you see all cars have stopped, you just yeah. follow and you just stop your car as well. Good, very good. Uh, good, I think that you're right. I will put another, another question in, in the same question, uh, another aspect of the question. Uh, with one example, with one example to realize that it's not so easy, it's not a common communication. Yeah, you, you need a communication to transmit ideas, but this is not the usual one. What happened if I'm saying now, you well, you know, uh, there is a new law in the country now, in all people in Kenya should pay $100. <laughs> to their professors. Um, so I, I'm telling you, I, I'm communicating you a new rule. Uh, you will pay me $100? No one? Just one? <laughs> well, I expect you know, at least one. <laughs> no, why? 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 Because you are not convinced at the end of the day that I'm telling the truth, that I'm giving you a, a, a new rule of the legal system of Kenya. So the communication should be, should have one thing, a communication that it's able to convince you. Um, how can be that communication? Yeah, it could be by words, by actions, yeah, good, 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 good. So that's why, that's why uh, we will say, how is the transmission of legal conceptions? Well, first, it needs an act of communication. Good, you got it. But then, uh, how can convince the other people that it is compulsory, it, it, it's, you need to do that because this is the law. And we can answer because who received the legal message, I agree with it, free way. If I, I'm saying, you know, you have not to kill anyone, you know, any innocent people, probably you will hear me and you will agree with that. And yeah, it's an act of communication, but you understand that it is reasonable. And I'm saying uh, things that you are convinced also, no? So this is the way, first way. Second way, second way. By faith, by faith. It is, faith plays a big, role and 
enormous George's role in the field of the law. What kind of role? Uh, so, <laughs> we can, how, how, how uh, we are convinced? Well, probably because we have faith in someone, in someone. The, the most basic faith is based a faith in the authorities. One day, the president of, the, of Kenya or the parliament said, well, this is the new law. And all the citizens of this country are convinced, are convinced. What caused the law? A conviction, a conviction that from now, uh, uh, the new law is that. And all people are convinced and try to follow the law because it's the law. <laughs> yeah. It's a faith, a faith, an act of faith in the authorities. So, but there could be another kind of faith. Yeah. This is the principal one uh, and the most common uh, faith no? in, in the legal field. No? There could be not only a moral faith, you know, a political faith in the political authorities but also a faith in some moral authority, some moral authority. Probably most of the things that we know now about the law, we have heard something about this from the lips of our parents. And we realize that our parents love us. Uh, and I trust in my parents. I give credit, and, and that's why it's very reasonable to do that. And if they told me something, it's because they love me. At the end of the day, uh, the the most strongest faith we give to those who love us. This is a phrase of Gratzinger. <laughs> we believe in those who loves us. Uh, love us. Uh, so it is very, very, very deep, I think so. No? Uh, and more or less, not only uh, with my, our parents, but probably could be, for example, a professor. No? A professor that is telling you something about intellectual property, you will believe probably if, if, if he is a good professor. If, if it's a bad one, you, <laughs> you will think, well, who knows if it is true. <laughs> uh, and more or less, this is the th way of thinking of, of the antique uh, society, of Roman society, for example. No? That's why they decide to put together all the big ideas of the great uh, jurist of Ro the Roman Empire in one code. It's a collection of phrases of the people who knows about the law. Why? Because they, they, are, they are experts. Huh? Yeah, and that's why uh, well, it's an act of faith, an act of faith in Gallo, in Cicerón, in Salustio, in so many great philosophers, in Ulpian, uh, obviously, that the, uh, <laughs> if they say something about law, probably it is true. It's a, an act of faith. Yeah. Obviously, it should be in something uh, that indicates what is just. So, let's go on uh, to the next one. By an act of simple trust that the receiver gives to the interlocutor. An act of simple trust. For example, probably, probably, you have never been, <laughs> well, most of the laws of the country, you have never taken from the, uh, from the, directly from the authorities, no? But you have heard something about in the newspapers, in the television, in YouTube, or probably you have some notice of some law that because you received an, SMS, a message of in WhatsApp. And you believe, <laughs> you believe in WhatsApp, no, obviously not in WhatsApp, in, in the ones who sent uh, you that message. 
but this, he is not the authority. And you believe in, in, in that person, and you believe in someone that appears in, in television. He said, the new law is this, and now we will extend the lockdown one more month. And you believe, well, it seems to be true, huh? because I, I, uh, I'm seeing the same news in this newspaper, in the television, in my WhatsApp. So probably, probably it is true. I give uh, some some credit. I just give. Uh, I trust. I trust the the ones who appears in the television and the ones who sent me a message. So it's an act of simple trust in someone. In someone, uh, it's not an act of faith. It's simple trust. Uh, and finally, by the simple acceptance. Conscious or unconscious of what is seen in others. No? Uh, more or less is related, but it's just uh, I accept. No, I accept with the will. With the will, there there is a combination between the the acts of the will and the acts of the intellect. Yes, Sally. I'm just wondering. Can we say by prosecuting? the wrongdoers as a way of transmitting legal concepts to them. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 obviously. Yeah, it's an act of communication, that, no? But you have to, to add how you con can convince, how you can convince, because if you uh, communicate something and you cannot convince that it is the law, there is no transmission of legal conception. Oh, okay. thank you. Okay. <laughs> but, but, okay. Mm -hmm. This is the, the act of communication that could transmit legal conceptions to other people. Yeah? Uh, so, uh, I think that you, you will read this all in the code. And let's go ahead with the excuse last me? question. Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, and just to add on Sally's question, can you also say that delegation of duties of a legislative body is also an act of transmission? A delegation is a decision. Any kind of decision has to be with the will. Uh, yeah. Uh, obviously, all things that have to be with the will have to be with the intellect because the will is the desire of the intellect, uh, a phrase of the medieval authors. No? Uh, but delegation properly is an act of the will. I will, we will talk about that later. Yeah, that in any case, the is also involves uh, the intellect. Okay, so. Uh, the last question, besides secession, how legal conceptions could be extinguished, could, could disappear, could be no longer enforced? Yes, please. Uh, maybe when there's a new legal conception that is applicable to the same issue good so you hit the mark of one part of the answer <laughs> uh, yeah with a new legal conception yeah if we change our way of thinking about one thing and the whole society think in quite different way well there's a new legal conception and the last disappeared yes catherine Example, so, sorry, can you speak louder? I cannot hear you. I'm saying some of them could be forgotten, like very old customs may be forgotten. Very good. Pro normally, that is the most hard uh, answer. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How uh, disappear ideas? Well, we can't forget one idea. You, we can't forget one part of the subject. And in the same way, it, but in that answer, it's very good 
to 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 think one thing that uh, normally normally uh, well nobody talks about that uh, the legislator used to say when i approve one law should be the law until i revoke or repeal that law but there is in in all the countries of the world uh, especially with more uh, uh, years <laughs> that for example one or three or two or three centuries ago they someone approved one law but now nobody uh, remember that law and it's no longer in force because no one remember that it's, it's a, a, a matter of intelligence no forget if you, if all the society forget one law it's not longer in force that's why uh, and that is a source of law yeah acacia yes do you want don't you want to say something acacia i don't know yeah. how to pronounce your name sorry so sorry yeah. um okay so maybe if the authority who had transmitted the information is no longer trusted yeah probably could be yeah good good answer i have never uh, thought about that but you're right sally yes or joy first was uh, joy um following the doctrine of reversing stantibus um, maybe when the circumstances change such that that legal conception cannot apply anymore. So yeah, well, when the, the, the immediate uh, legal conception is based uh, in, in the reality and the reality change, obviously. We, we can reconduce that to the same answer that uh, when a new legal conception appears. When can appear? Because the, the reality change, the conception change. Finally, Sally, yes. Okay, mine was almost like Joy's, if not the same, but I was borrowing from, I don't quite remember the name of the scholar, but the Sorry, I heard, yes, I don't remember the name of the scholar and... Can you repeat me the, the, the question, please? It's because uh, I, I, I'm not hearing you. I don't know if you, some one of you have heard Soli? We haven't heard her. Uh, no. <laughs> Soli, I don't know if you can solve, uh, resolve your, 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 the problem or you can write the answer also in the chat. In this way I, I will be able to, to see your, your answer. In the meanwhile, Collins. Sorry, I had uh, raised my hand earlier when you had asked the question. <laughs> okay, don't worry. So, uh, let's go again with this. Uh, we will see uh, that how the cessation will work now by a legal act that is contrary, fair, and sufficient to change the legal conception. Yes, in some way. Mm, uh, you have said no. Uh, is uh, there is a new law because the authorities put a new rule? All people will begin to change to to have another conception of what is the law by a general substitution with another legal conception. The cause could be an act of the will, and that's why we change because the, there is a new agreement. For example the the conception of the of what is the law is changed with the new agreement or with the new statute law or with the new constitution but also if all the society change the way the way of understand something no? and also by forgetfulness no? as we have said okay now 
we will see some types of legal conception. And we will see natural and cultural conceptions, uh, a distinction uh, of legal conceptions, uh, seeing the subjects, because could be a conception of an individual, of a group, of the whole society, of the whole humanity could be also. And based or not in the Britain law, uh, this we will see in detail next week. And finally, the conceptions could be true or false. It is clear, no? It is clear. Let's begin now with natural and cultural conceptions. So, uh, here is the some notion of natural legal conception. What is a natural legal conception? Is a set of legal conclusions that are necessarily obtained by knowing the reality and by correct reasoning. So, when we see the reality, we have some concepts, some notions, and some some, some reasoning. But then, we, with reflection, we will get more, and we will reflect. This is just. This is not just. No. All legal knowledge should be built on this knowledge, because all 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 knowledge should be based on evidence. On evidence, obviously, no on the evidence of the senses of, uh, and on, on the, on the, with logic should be coherent. And that's why all this kind of, of knowledge, especially legal knowledge, should be based in the natural conception. So natural conceptions include, first, the direct knowledge of the reality. Huh? This is very important, very important. And uh, well, I don't know. I will will say now uh, something about that, and we will read some lines of the code. Uh, but first, well, uh, the the four uh, sources of the natural conception in the necessary reasoning. You no, know? what kind of necessary reasoning could be? There could be so many. For example, the the. Totality includes all the parts, no? This is a necessary reason, no? Or one plus one is two, uh, or, or or this could be a necessary reason. You need to have this to develop any kind of knowledge, not only the legal knowledge. Then the basic conceptions of thoughts, no? The basic uh, reasonings, no? For example, uh, you are not a thing. That's why, uh, uh, well, the the slave labor is is not just. <laughs> uh, if we cannot distinguish between human and things, person, there there is no law possible. This is impossible to have any kind of legal reasoning, no? because the first thing is to think. This is a person, and he or she should have some kind of rights, some kind of duties about one thing. But if you have not things, <laughs> if all the things are actions, if you have not that notion, well, simply there is not possible law. Uh, okay, next one. Uh, knowledge obtained by evidence, by evidence, no? There could be two kinds of evidence, the evidence of the senses, but also the evidence of the intellect. No? Uh, and finally, we can add well, that natural low, uh, legal conceptions uh, could have so many elements, notions, principles, rules, policy, and so Let's see. Let's see now the code. Uh, I will show you now the code. And here is the chapter of legal conceptions, the nature of legal conceptions, explain with detail the life. We have seen all these kind of things in times, finally. 
And the first one is natural and cultural conceptions. We will talk first about natural conceptions. And here you can have the same things that we have in, in the slide. Natural conceptions include direct knowledge of the reality, necessary reasoning, basic conception of thought, and conceptions obtained by evidence. Direct knowledge, no? Direct knowledge of experimental reality produce in the intelligence a series of habits, concepts, judgment, reasoning, necessary for the existence of law. Well, it's a I just put here one example, thus, for example, it is necessary to know about Peter's existence in order to be able to contract with Peter. <laughs> it's, it's so evident, not so obvious, uh, that we need absolutely this kind of knowledge to, 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 to construct any kind of legal reasoning any kind of law, even. Necessary reasoning. This could be the most hard limit to understand because it, it is a philosophical limit. Uh, because here you can find the innate, innate habits, the necessary reasoning required, the innate habits of the intellect necessary to reason and even that is necessary to develop current speech, such as analytical or logical principles. So, what is an innate habit? Uh, well, there is a, a lot of discussion, a great discussion about if we have something in our intellect when we were born or not. Well, the classical, uh, the classical answer is, uh, not we have not uh, uh, no one idea, but we have any kind of some kind of habits habits. And when the intellect receives the first inf first information, the intellect used to work in some way, in some way. And um, what kind of habits could be? Uh, well, uh, three kinds of habits. Uh, uh, first, the ontological habits, second, the practical habits, and then the practical, the habits of the person. It, it's so deep, no? wisdom. No? The first one is so so simple. No? For example, if you, the principle of not contradiction, uh, well, you can, it, it's clear, no? all things uh, that are in some way are not in the contrary way. No, there is shouldn't be any kind of contradiction. No? Uh, or the habit of synthesis in the practical level, synthesis means a command of do good and avoid evil. So when the when the, our mind understand what is good, the the our mindset, we have to do good and to avoid evil. Yeah, and, and it is the way of, of working of our mind. And finally, the most deepest and hardest to explain also is the habit of wisdom, wisdom, no? that teach us, well, you have to love the people, no? We have uh, to be good with the other person, no? Yeah, we are free, and yeah, uh, well, uh, in any case, in any case, uh, I will never ask you something about this in, in, in any quiz because it's very philosophical. But the main idea of this limit is that there is some something in, in our minds that is at the very beginning. Some first reasons, some first idea that you will agree. Uh, for example, non-contradiction seems to be obvious, no? Is the first principle of the uh, ends of the cosmos, uh, of the knowledge also. So that's why all these kind of first ideas we can find in the necessary reason. And also the, all the uh, principles of the logic, 
uh, science of, and of the analytics, also the co coherence in, in risk. That's, well, and that is the basic conceptions of life. We have said that we need some kind of ideas to work uh, that are not the first one, that are connection of the first one. I put here some examples. For example, the distinction between the world and us. We are not the world. <laughs> yeah, because if there is no distinction, there is no possible law <laughs> because uh, the law requires one that should pay another. And if there is no another, you shouldn't pay anything. <laughs> yeah, the distinction between truth and error, right and wrong, imagination and reality, existence of movement, causality, time, freedom, life. If you don't, don't believe that there is time, <laughs> well, it's impossible to pay anything. Pay is an action, and an action needs some time. Yeah. So there is a lot of concept that we need to, to understand the law that is part of the basic conception uh, well, of, the, of the natural conception. And the evident knowledge, well, that could be obtained in that evidence of the senses by the experience and by logical or formal uh, reasoning also. Uh, yeah, you can read this. Uh, I don't know, well, there are some things that are more obvious than others. Uh, it, it is just a synthesis if someone of you want to be deep in this part of evidence. I can give you an article uh, in English written by, by myself uh, because it's what it's uh, love. Oh, well, I, I just seen your question, Sally. I will answer after the lecture. Uh, okay. So, this is a natural uh, conception. And, and I think that it could be identified with natural law. Uh, the natural law that we know. <laughs> what is natural law at the end of the day? is a correct reasoning yeah uh, is the part of the law that is very reasonable <laughs> it's evident and reasonable probably this is natural law this is natural law it is it's not some strange things uh, yeah should be first uh, well we can put in so many considerations about god and so many things but at the end of the day for us for us is the reasoning that is based in the reality uh, and it's correct, uh, it's not false. This is the natural law, law conception. And, and here you can find how it works with the natural law formula. And finally, the cultural legal conceptions, which will be, uh, well, uh, there could be a, uh, all things that we create that is not necessary, that could be or couldn't. Uh, cultural legal conception is that legal knowledge that is neither evident nor necessary. It is the simplest definition that each one has about the law. Now it's so clear, no? It's not necessary in the way of how we can get married. Well, it's not necessary. It is a cultural conception. That's why it's, there is a many, many, so many possibilities. Well, uh, but we understand one of them, uh, and that it's okay. Uh, perfect. And that, but it's cultural. It's not necessary. It's not evident. No. So, how uh, cultural conceptions are created? Well, you have the answer here, as, all, <laughs> as, uh, as in all things, no? By the intervention of the intelligence, by the reflection, well, when it ca captures the evident and necessary law, but also reflecting by the intervention of the will. It is very interesting. I, I, I want to read this second part. But first, I want to explain you the, the problem. 
The problem is that we are not angels. <laughs> this is the problem. Uh, there is a, a, a role of the will in the intellect. Um, the will many times, many times push the intellect to resolve things in some specific way. This is very, uh, this is the problem uh, or the good thing. Or it could be a good thing or a bad thing. The, the good thing, no? The will can push the intellect to study one thing. Let's take about that. You have to study that because tomorrow I will give the quiz. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, and the wheels helps the intellect to, to have put attention in something. But also the, the, the will can say, no, please don't study, don't, don't investigate so much in this field because probably could appear something that I don't want. And this is the typical way in which the people used to excuse himself. No? So uh, this is very, very, very important, no? because, for example, the, uh, probably you have heard something about corruption, <laughs> um, people that are not so honest, honest in their life. I don't know, but I, I, I know so many people a uh, time ago from when they were in the school or in the university, all of them were good people, great people, great guys. But with the time, with the time, you don't realize, wow, incredible, how oh, this guy changed. And now he's a politician, that, wow with so many process against him because, wow, <laughs> appears some bribes, actors of corruption and so many things, no? And what could, could, why these things, things could happen, no? Because, because, because the, the, the people realize at one moment that, well, probably this is against the law, but, but uh, let's don't think so much in the law, but think a little more in my necessities, in the things that I need. Well, I need some money, extra money, because I, because I have so many problems and, and I'm working, working a lot more than they expect. And that's why I can ask a little more money. And a lot of excuses that they will push to the intellect to give, give me an, an answer for that. Then why I have to work so much? <laughs> yeah, and yeah, it's reasonable to us, no? And little by little, the intellect uh, corrupts itself. Yeah, the will could push to the good things, to the intellect, or to the bad things, no? Probably, uh, for example, in another field, no? Sexuality. Um, in this field, all people used to know more or less the, the, the good way when people have 10 years old or 10 years old, no? But the, the good behavior, no? But when they have 20 years or 30 years, probably many people will, ch we will change a lot because some of them could have some addiction or some something uh, and don't understand very well, and the, the will will push the intellect to to don't, don't think so much in the rule. Let's think a, a little more in the excuse of well, probably my parents never understand me because 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 no no my parents never understand me, and it's the will that is pushing the intellect to give some answer, and that's one of the way in which the will can push and can to, to create some cultural conception, no? This is the thing that I'm saying here in the code, no? By the intervention of the will, a cultural legal conception could be created, no? When? 
when the will accepts or rejects the evident or necessary law. Could, uh, it could reject the necessary law uh, also. Uh, when the will chooses a possibility, many times, well, we have so many possibilities, no? Uh, and they will say, no, uh, to the intellect, you have to choose that one. No? And when they will force the intellect to opt for an uncertain and insecure electoral option or prevents the intellect from judging what is fair. So, if you understand the, the thing that I said, you will understand why Aristotle say one thing, that, that what is justice? He said, uh, well, a just action. A just action or justice is the, uh, the things that a just man say that is just. <laughs> just is the thing that a just man say that is just. An honest man, an honest man that uh, that allow uh, the, his intellect to work honestly without any prejudice, without uh, without the will pushing so much. Yeah, uh, it's honest. It's honest. No, that never put excuses. This clever mind will find uh, better uh, and deeper uh, what is just. Because have no 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 any kind of problems, no. It is too, too deep that, that that intuition of Aristotle. I don't know if you agree with that. Well, in any case, let's go ahead. Uh, I don't know if you have any question about this. If not, I will put uh, another. Th I will go with another thing that will help more in your career. Uh, probably. It, and it, it is the distinction between according and the subject. Okay. So, according to the subjects, there could be so many legal conceptions. Cultural or traditional, uh, uh, legal conceptions that are shared by all the society. Common opinion are shared normally with the people of the society, but with the, what is the difference between these two? A cultural or traditions is not shared only by the people of the society that is living now, but is shared from so many years, so many, many time ago, uh, and the common opinion is just the people that is living now. No? This is the difference, more or less. No? The doctrine of the academics as a sort of flow, uh, this is quite famous. Also, the common and constant doctrine of the expert, that is not common, not as common of the common opinion, nor so common as the doctrine of all academics, but this is just the, the experts, the experts. So, let's see this one in the code. I, 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 I think that you, you will understand better with the code now. Legal conceptions according to the subjects. I, uh, for sure, I, I think that you have heard something about one, two, uh, even three of these one. You know, as a source of law, culture and tradition, you have heard for sure. For sure you know. Each community has the right to have, and then this, this could be new, and the right to the recognition respect and protection protection of the fair legal conception found in its culture and traditions. It is a right, it's a right. Nowadays, there is uh, so many treaties that talk about this right, the right to the traditions, to culture, 
what this culture was. Well, this is a big topic, this, this is a big question. Uh, in any case, uh, I think that you understand more or less how it could be uh, a source of law. Second, the common opinion, the common opinion. In, I'm copying here uh, a phrase of the digest of Paulo, one of the great Roman jurists. No? In no way should be altered what always and for everyone had a same term interpretation. What is the best way to understand the Britain law? Well, as for sure you can remember, no? As Pond, Roscoe Pond, or uh, Ehrlich, the other author said, no, the living law, no, seeing how the, the, the law is applied, no, and when you see how the law is applied in one society, you are seeing the common opinion, the common opinion. That's why is that is a source of law. That's why I said, and in that lecture, I agree absolutely with, with Elric or, and with Pond, because yes, you have to see the how is applied by the people that use that law. The law is a tool, and you have to see how the tool is used to understand how the law is. Okay. Well, it is very clever, I, I, and, uh, but now we are seeing that this is a, a legal conception of the people that applies the law. Okay, let's go with the next one. The doctrine of academics as a source of law. Uh, the doctrine, probably when you have studied the, the, at the very beginning of the career, the sources of law, uh, you have heard, well, the first one is the written law for many of them, and probably customs, and probably jurisprudence, and probably doctrine. doctrine. But many times people used to say, but doctrine is not directly a source of law. But in any case, it's a source of law. Why? 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 Because uh, when, well, it gives us some conception of what is law. And when the, the Britain law is clear, and probably the doctrine uh, doesn't work so much. But it, when it's so obscure, no? Many times it's obscure, or and it's obscure how to apply this to this case. No, then you will have uh, the reasoning, the reasoning, the reflection of the authors that try to understand as much as we can this topic. And this reflection, if it is shared and it is accepted, will create a, a law, a law, a rule of law. Then first begin in, in, in the books, no? then um, the train, then we'll pass to the judge, and, the, and then we'll pass to the written law, probably, you know? It's, it's a way, it's a way, no? And that's why it's a remote, probably, a source of law, the doctrine of the academics, no? Probably, if you have hard cases, the best way to, to resolve that is first to read what things authors said about this specific case of the law. Okay, this is the, the usual way. Then, uh, the common and constant doctrine of expert. Uh, and now, this is very, 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 it's a concept of the international procedural law. I think in from that field, this concept. Um, and I don't know if you have heard about uh, this princ principle in procedural law that said that you don't have to prove the law in the, tr in, in, in the face of the court, uh, but you have to give the facts to prove the facts and the judge will will give you the, the, the law. Have you heard about that, that principle or not? No? 
No one. <laughs> There is a principle in, 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 for all kind of process, specifically well, in, in the jurisdictional field uh, that says uh, in, in a court, you only have to give to the people, uh, to the judge, well, the, to prove the facts, obviously you can, you can say, and the law here is that, and you, uh, you can give some reasons, legal reasons, but first you have to prove the fact. But the judge should know the law of the country, and it is a principle. And it is a principle that you can apply just in the country, not in international law. Because if you go to an international court of human rights, could be or or of, of investment, if you go there, well, the judge probably will be not a citizen of Kenya. And probably will know not anything about the Kenyan law. <laughs> so if you uh, uh, work uh, as a lawyer, an international lawyer in an international court, you have to prove what is the law. And how you can prove what is the law in Kenya, in that international court, well, you will, you will have to hire one expert that is saying, and that says, well, the law in Kenya is that. And I am an expert and I, I, I wrote 20 books about uh, this specific law. And, and that's why I can assure you that the law in Kenya says that. Uh, okay, uh, and this is the opinion of the experts. It's, it's a proof of what is the law. Mugur, Georgina, you raised your hand. Do you want to say or ask something? Yeah, you asked if we have a principle about this. I don't know if it's similar, but we have something about jurisdiction that a certain court can only listen to a certain case. We have the Supreme Court, the High Court. I don't know if it's similar to the common and constant doctrine of expert law or... No, I, I think that could be different. Uh, no, the, the principle is so easy. Uh, when you go to courts in Kenya, the judge should know the, the law of Kenya, obviously, no? But if you go to international courts, the judge shouldn't should not know the law of Kenya because they, they are not from here, okay? This is the principle and deception is in the international area. Okay. It, it's, it, it is so easy, it's not, not, not complicated. But it's very good to know how, uh, this source of law because it's a source of law for, for an international judge, for example, no the common and constant doctrine of the experts. And for sure, if you, if you one day uh, become famous lawyer <laughs> and you have some, so many uh, work in international courts, you will remember that. Uh, that how can, can I prove some point of the law? Well, asking, what is the law to an expert? An expert that, what is an expert? Expert. How, how we can evaluate that academics? Well, with this second uh, paragraph that says the existence of such doctrine is proven by taking into account the number of academics. Mm. Yeah, who speaks and a point of, let me, there is some open, oh, I will mute. Oh. Let's go again. Well, according to the numbers of academic that speaks, speak on one point of law, their moral authority, as well the number of the tractors and so many things. That, why, why I put here these kind of things? Because in an international court, there are two parts, two parties. 
uh, and one party will put one expert saying one thing, and the way to defend the other part is to put another expert that says precisely the contrary things. And now you have two experts that talks about the same thing. So what you have to do to resolve that case, no? if you are defending the first part, for example, you will say, no, my, my experts have much more moral authority because he brought seven books about this topic and your expert is a corrupt professor and so on. Yeah, have no moral authority. Or, or you can say the number of academics. No? I'm showing you, Judge, 20 experts and the other part just can show one. Who has the reason? Probably I, probably I. I'm proving what is the law with this. And, and you can say, well, so many things. You can read this and, and you will understand many things. Okay, this is the, the, the four uh, divisions of types of legal conceptions according to the subject. No? It, it, it's shared for all the community along the years, probably is culture or tradition. If it's shared for all, from all the community just now, a common opinion. If it is, could be the doctrine, the academic doctrine, or the common and constant doctrine of experts. Well, now let's go again ahead with this one. Uh, well, they say or not in the Britain law. We will speak about this in the next week. Probably will be the the lecture that will help you more along the career and learn your if you obviously if you practice law then you will uh, use the things that I will say in the next lecture every day of your life is the, the most important in practical terms the next week a uh, distinction of basic written law or not basic we will see but next week and uh, now we will see something about true and false conception and this is the last learning objective of this uh, lecture so so to understand that we, well, we know that there could be so many errors in the field of the law. But we are seeing the errors, specifically it is an error of the intellect, and that's why it's an erroneous legal conception. No? The errors could, could have uh, some legal effect. Could be source of law. This is the question. Errors could be source of law. False ideas could be source of law. How can I be? Well, I, I explain, I put, put some examples in this lecture and in other lectures. But now we will do an exercise. An exercise in this. Uh, and I will give you until two o'clock, two o'clock, uh, a time to discuss with your friends, with this classmate, uh, to, and you have to give me five, uh, at least three, five examples of what kind of errors you find in the legal system or um, see if it produces legal effect and principally. How? How can produce legal effects? How many errors did you find? Yes, Arthur. I think in the group that we're in, though the time was a bit short. Um, some of the some of the suggestions that that were raised were things to do with um, omissions. When there's an omission in law, that then causes 
for, for instance, in discriminatory in laws on discrimination, where a certain class isn't mentioned, then it causes that class to not be under the protection of of the laws on discrimination. Then there was another one on changes in law for a bad purpose. So, for instance, um, in the past there were many constitutional amendments mm -hmm. that were made by governments that were um, that were for the purpose of um, cementing power or um, or taking care of political rivals and and etc. Some of the examples were like during single party rule and when police were given almost unlimited power. Mm -hmm. Then there was um, another example on generalized legal errors. Um, the example was, that was given was in slavery, where um, the Jim Crow rules were allowed to uh, be implemented based on uh, the misconception that certain classes of people were below yeah. Uh, well, well, well I, I think that most of, of the examples that you gave me are guilty errors, no? They, well, more or less, more or less guilty, no? I don't know, probably slavery. I don't know uh, if a, a man could, uh, could understand this and have not guilty. I don't know. Please, yes. Did you want to say something? Um. Yeah, I wanted to say something, but I don't know how to classify that. <laughs> but in my group, we got three. Which um, one? And the first, uh, just example. breakout room eight. So we got um, rogue leaders. And the example we gave was the um, what happened in Nazi Germany with the Jews. And so because there was a source of authority as Hitler, so that was there was the communication from that source of authority. So maybe now the people could believe in what Hitler was seeing as law. And the effect was that there was no freedom of expression, there was death, there was discrimination. Yeah, there's of the effects, uh, yeah, in the, in the field of the law. Yeah, good, good. Do you want to add anything? No. Um, yeah, we had two more, which I'm just going to rush <laughs> through. So we also talked about unqualified judges. Um, and then based on the system of common law, so whatever a judge says, even if it's bad law, can run through the whole system, and that's a, an error. And then another one we talked about was uncouth traditions and culture. So for instance, like if the practice of FGM becomes a law, um, mm. and then that's carried forward, so that's an error that can find its way into the legal system. Yeah. Okay, good. Tasneem, yes. Okay, so our group, um, we tried to narrow it down to particular sections of the law. And yeah, good. in that, um, I was able to get the point, I was able to get a point and then I'll let Lisa say at the other point that she came up with. Um, so one of the points I thought of is, as per the Sale of Goods Act, and this is, I think it's section 10, I'll have to counter um, confirm. It's written. No, I cannot hear you, sorry. Someone of you uh, discovered any, any error that can produce law in contractual law? In any kind of agreement? For example, that can produce law. Lisa, yes. Um, I think what Tasneem was saying um, in the Sale of Goods Act, where um, contracts above 200 shillings are required to be in writing, but she stated that she thought that was an error because 200 shillings in Kenya is um, an insignificant amount. And also in that section, they've written it in pounds, which is not really applicable in Kenya. Okay. There, there is a, a two kinds of ways of producing a effects. The first one is pun with, like, with a penalty, <laughs> uh, saying this is not valid, um, I will punish you. For example, any crime is an error. 
obviously no the regime uh, well, we'll talk about the errors in the in the field of the law in the uh, in the statute law but for example there could be two kind of errors in a in a contract the first error that is uh, the cause of that error is a fraud one who said something to uh, to have uh, more money in a contract no but he, one of the parties know very well that it is false that this is this car is not working very well and sells that car as it is new but it, it is not uh, so this error is a fraud the cause is a fraud and probably the contract is not valid what is not valid because uh, the other party will never agree if he uh, realizes uh, that the car doesn't work but if the error is common a common error is called the common error for example both parties uh, think that the car is more or less well it's used but it's more or less well but in the second day they realize that there is a problem that appears <laughs> that appears but the the, the seller uh, didn't know about that error the contract is valid because the common error make use there is a, a phrase very old phrase 2000 years ago someone said the common error make law make uh, make the agreement valid um, because it's common is there is no fraud fraud uh, this this is one one way you can see that errors could, could produce law in two ways when there we can distinguish two kind of errors a guilty errors and, and not guilty errors no? and, and it is very important to understand how errors or false conception or misconceptions can produce law because if there is some kind of guilty there will be so different effect no for example if you uh, have the number of credit card of your friend <laughs> and you use it obviously you will commit fraud no you will uh, uh, use the identity of someone else to 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 an error <laughs> and you will receive so many things it is guilty and it is punished and the consequence and the legal effect is obviously that there there is some kind of a punishment penalty uh, with these guilty errors no? but there are other two kind of errors no? uh, and there is a difference between ignorance uh, and obliviousness no? uh, or, or to forget something no? forgetfulness also no? uh, we can see uh, that sometimes we, we can have and um, guilty errors uh, because we put in risk into risk uh, something that probably could be not so good the nazi regime is more like like that no probably there there are not so good laws in the nazi regime but in any case uh, in any case as gustav ragbrook said no law could be unbearable unjust no so in just no so in just no couldn't be any law and quite different errors is just ignorance no just not to know that could probably could there could be some law but i don't know about that law that's why it's so different no if we have any kind of doubt and this is this is the idea here if we have any kind of doubt that in the next step will be dramatic yeah will be problematic and will be um, could be some problem legal problem i mean probably the thing that we have to do is to resolve the doubt to clarify ourselves about what is the law in that specific field specific topic a specific business or anything no but we have to resolve because if we have a doubt and we 
don't resolve that, we are guilty of that error. And if we cause damage, we will have to pay. But in the case of ignorance, it's quite different. We don't have to know nothing. It's an invincible ignorance, no? Probably. But if we have doubts, it's quite different, no? Yeah, so this is... I, I want uh, to read in, in, in the last part of this class some, some phrases of Einstein. Uh, for sure you have heard about this guy. <laughs> he said, two things are infinite. The universe and human stupidity. <laughs> and I'm not so sure about the universe. <laughs> it's very famous. This is uh, also related with, with our, our topic. No? We are all very ignorant. What happens is that not all ignore the same things. And it is true. It is true. We know probably so many things about law but nothing about uh, math or nothing about chemistry. Well, we are ignorant in so many fields. No? So, uh, but if we have to know something, then we have the responsibility, some kind of liability. For example, if someone hired us as a lawyer, and we don't know uh, what the constitution says about this specific business, well, we are guilty. We have some professional liability. Uh, there are some things that we should know. Uh, and there is there are another that we shouldn't know, obviously. No? And finally, the, this is a, a famous uh, phrase of Martin Luther King Jr. that says, nothing in the world is more dangerous than sincere ignorance and conscientious stupidity. But this, this is clear, no? But there is a difference, no? The stupidity, <laughs> you know, a guilty errors and, and ignorance. Probably some, uh, there are some kind of ignorance, no? Ignorance with a doubt that could be in another possibility, the, the legal answer, or without a doubt. If there is no doubt in the ignorance, you have no liability. If there is some doubt, you probably you have some liability. If there is stupidity, you, have, you are absolutely responsible. You, you will see when you read uh, the, you, you read, read the, the code, well, all the regulation, how how the errors in the in the statute law, the errors in the contract, the errors in the crime, any crime is an error, obviously, no? works. It's so different the effects. But with these main ideas, I think that you will be able to resolve better all these kind of cases. Well, uh, the time uh, we are on time to finish. <laughs> the lecture uh, thank you so much as always if you have any kind of doubt uh, you can email me uh, or we can have also if you want any kind of meeting uh, but for today is enough sally please send me an email i am co i'm copied your your question just to answer you bye bye thank you so much <laughs>